like I said, there's three coding systems, and they all look different, and it's very important that we, in coding, understand the differences. So the PCS code structure always has seven characters, and there's never any punctuation, and that's what, what sets it apart from the other coding systems. So CBT, which is the procedure coding system used for outpatient and physician offices, it only has five characters in the code. ICD-10-CM, the diagnosis portion of ICD-10, can have up to seven characters, but it has a decimal point after the third character. So if you were in the coding world and saw different codes, you would be able to de decipher which code was PCS, which code was CM, or which code was CBT, just based on how it looked. So a PCS code always has seven characters. Never any punctuation, always seven characters. And all of those characters have a meaning. So I, again, when we're coding, we're telling a story, right? In, in our class, we're telling the story of what procedure was done to our patient. That's our story. And our code needs to represent that. So our seven character code, every character tells a part of that story. Okay, character one is the section. And so if it's from, say, the medical and surgical area, or OB, um, section two is the body system. So where was that procedure completed? What body system? Step three, or character three, is the root operation. And that's the intent of the procedure. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the root operation, because that's really kind of the key of PCS coding is that root operation. Character four is the body part. So where in the body specifically was that completed at? Like body system, for example, character two might be cardiovascular. And then body part four might be a specific part of the cardiovascular system, like the aorta. Character five is the approach. So how was that surgery completed? Was it open? Did they use a scope like a laparoscopy? Character six is if a device was used. And then character seven is for a qualifier. Now, with the seven character format, uh, the characters can be letters or numbers. And the only ones that aren't used is the letter, capital letter O and I are not used in PCS coding because those can be confused with numbers zero and one. So, for example, most of the codes come from the medical and surgical section. It's the biggest section in the PCS codebook, and it starts with a zero. And many times, students will put a capital O for the code inside our weekly coding quizzes, and the computer marks it wrong. Now, I do go back and regrade, so don't let, let that alarm you. But it just goes to show you that if the character doesn't match identical, Right, the computer doesn't recognize it, even though I know the student didn't mean a capital O because that's not even used in PCS. The computer doesn't know that. So try to remember to always use a zero, but if you put a capital O, I'm not going to mark you wrong. One thing that's unique about PCS is we use a Z to hold kind of a place value. If there's not a, a value to put in that character slot, then we put a Z in there. And there's, once we look at the code in the index, then we go to a table to build the rest of the code. And you don't have to try to figure out if a Z goes there. There's a table we always refer to when we're building our PCS code. And it'll give us a Z in the table value. So you know when to use a Z. But I just want you all to realize that the Z means nothing. It's just really a placeholder. It doesn't have a value. It just is is there to hold the seven characters in place, if that makes sense. So remember, there's not any decimals or punctuation. Again, if you use the decimal or punctuation, that would look like a CM code and totally change the meaning of the code. So a PCS code and a CM code could look the same, but the decimal point says it's a CM code. So now you've just changed the procedure to a diagnosis if you put a decimal point in it. So make sure never to use decimals or any kind of punctuation with your PCS code.
And then the titles are going to vary from section to section. So the seven characters for med surge are exactly what I just told you. But as we get to the, the later part of class and into some of the ancillary services like chiropractic, it may not be root operation, um, might be something else like treatment or modifier um, modality. So the the seven titles can change from different sections that were in in the PCS book, which the section is the first character. So if you open up your PCS codebook for everyone, hopefully you guys have that with you. If you just kind of um, skim through the pages, like flip to page 779, for example. So you can see on page 779, as an example of what I'm talking about, these are the tables that we go to to code. And the seven character format that I showed you right here is the medical and surgical code structure format, which is, again, the most common section. But you can see by looking at the table on page 779, these titles aren't the same. So for example, character five on page 779 says qualifier, it doesn't say approach. And character six says equipment, it doesn't say device. So that's what I meant by titles for the characters may vary from section to section. Okay, so not every section is going to follow this exact format. They'll all have seven characters, but the value slot definition might change. But again, the whole probably first five or so weeks of class, we're in the medical and surgical section, so this will be the structure you see at first for many, many weeks. I just don't want you to be in shock when, like, you don't have to pick the approach anymore because it's a different kind of procedure. We use two different sections of our PCS codebook. The index is at the very front. It starts on page... 31 and goes, it's all these gray pages at the very front, goes to page 123. You guys might want to tab this, um, put a sticky note, something to identify that. This is where we look up the procedure. This is where, if you kind of think about like a, when you used to go to the library and there was a Dewey Decimal System and you had to go to the card reader, maybe I'm like totally aging myself here. But we'd have to look up where to go find a book, right? What section in the library could we find this book? It's kind of like that, where you're looking up your procedure in this index, and it's going to give you the first three or four characters in the code. So then you take those characters and go to the middle section of the book called the table, which starts on page 125. You find your, your three or four character table, and build the rest of your your code there. So you you don't always have to look up your procedure in the index. I would highly recommend it. A seasoned coder that's been coding for many years doesn't have to look in the index because they're very familiar with the tables. But as a new student, I would encourage you to make sure you always look it up in the index, then go to the table. So we look it up in the index by our root operation which is that third character that I just told you was kind of the key to our PCS code. So we look it up by the root operation. So let's, I'm just going to pick one on, on the first page here. So if you guys are on page 31, let's just say we did an alteration of the abdominal wall. So if we go to alteration, which is in the second column on page 31, about halfway down, we, we see alteration and then indented underneath is abdominal wall. And you guys should see the characters 0, W, 0, F. Okay, so those are the characters at the table you go to. 
the table is always the first three characters. So we would go to table 0, W, 0. So now let's flip to that. And the tables are in order, alphanumeric order. So 0, W is going to be towards the back of the book. Okay, so 0, W, 0 is on page 644. It's a purple, it's in the purple. And so on page 644, you want to look for that table that it told you to go to, which ours was 0, W, 0, right, which is the first table at the very top. And then our fourth character was F. So you find the row where that character is. So do you guys see in the body part character four, the box, there's F like halfway down that box. So there's our fourth character. So now we have to build seven meat. I put some pebbles and, and I just put a little bit of meat. I didn't even put a lot. Okay, I hear somebody talking, so I'm going to be understanding. And so then the fifth, sixth, and seventh character, we have to build from the table here. So the fifth character is the approach. So we'll, we're just going to say it's open. So they made an incision, cut the patient open. That's a zero. So our fifth character would be zero. And then our, our sixth character is that they put a device in during the surgery. We're going to say no. So our character would be... I'm going to leave them there because they will Okay, somebody's uh, talking, and I don't know why you're not muted. But if you can mute yourself, that would be great. Thank you. So our sixth character, we're going to put D for no device. And then our seventh character, this is an example of where that's the only option is D for no qualifier. So we're going to pick D because that's the only option. So our code would be 0W0F, 0 Okay, so we always look it up in the index, and then we come to the table and build the rest of our procedure. And we're going to do this all, you know, session long in every lecture and get to cases. So I just wanted to give you guys an example of how we use the book. The, if you guys are still on page 644, what I want to highlight here is you have to stay in the same row. You can't go up and down in the rows. So sometimes you're going to see your body part, your fourth character, in more than one row. So the table underneath on page 644, the second table um, for the bypass, which is table 0, W1, if we, if we look at the body part there, so I'm looking at the table in the middle on page 644, The pleural cavity, right and left, if you look, they're in the second row and the third row, both. So once you pick a row, you have to stay in that row. You can't jump around your row. So if our procedure would say open, we did a pleural cavity procedure, so our character would be nine. And if our procedure was open, then we'd have to stay in that second row. We couldn't go even though pleural cavity right is in the third row of that column, that table, we can't go to that table row. You have to stay in the row that you're in the whole way across. Does that make sense to everyone? So the main question you always want to ask yourself as you're coding PCS is what was the intent of the procedure? Okay. The intent of the procedure is how you select your root operation. So the root operation, again, is what we look up in the front of the book, the index, to really get to the correct table to code our procedure. Now I want to turn your attention to the back of your book, the appendix. 
So Appendix B, which is on page 805 to 810, is the root operation definition. So I'm going to say this every single lecture, but please make flashcards for these. So the first few weeks, like I said, we're doing the medical and surgical section. It's the biggest. And these pages go to 807 is where the end of the medical and surgical root operation ends, and then you'll see the obstetric start. So I would encourage you all sometime this week to start making flashcards for everything in the medical and surgical section for the root operation definition. So page 805, 806, and half of 807, there's 31 root operations in the medical and surgical section. And remember, those PCS codes always start with a zero. So as a coder, again, it's very important that you be able to identify your code. So anytime you see a PCS code that starts with a zero, you should know it came from the medical and surgical section. Or if we look at page 807, for example, the second section there, root operation definitions for other sections, obstetric start with a one. So if you're coding, say, a cesarean section, a C-section, that code should start with a one. It shouldn't start with a zero. Those are just some nice double checks you can do to make sure you're in the right section of PCS coding. And again, it explains the intent of the procedure. We cannot use the terminology that the physician might use in the op report. We have to be able to match that to the root operation definition. So an example of that might be, say that the physician removed the appendix. And in the op report that we're coding from, it says appendix was removed. Or it might say appendectomy. Okay, if we think about our medical terminology and we break down appendectomy, ectomy is the suffix for what? For excision. So if we come to our root operations, on page 805, there is a root operation for excision. So a coder might think, oh, appendectomy is excision, because ectomy means excision. But that wouldn't match. So if we look at the definition here on page 805 for excision, it's cutting out or off without replacement a portion of a body part. I have never in my life seen where they took part of the appendix. They take the entire thing. They're not going to take part of it. So excision would not work. Appendectomy, that term, we cannot match that as just coding off that term. So removal is the same thing. If the physician said removal of the appendix, we can't use that term because if we look at removal, which is on page 806, removal, our definition for PCS coding is taking out or off a device from a body part. So they're taking out an organ, right? If they're doing an, an appendectomy, they're taking the entire organ out. They're not taking a device out. So removal doesn't work. So it's very important that you, the coder, understand these definitions in the root operation definition appendix because this is how you code. You can't use the term the physician used in the report. You have to be able to... Um, Understand the, understand the report to know what the physician said, and then how to link that to a definition here. So if I was coding an appendectomy, and in the op report they removed the appendix, I'm going to go to resection, because I, the coder, know that the definition of resection, which is on page 807, is cutting out or off without replacement all the body parts. So anytime they take out an entire body part or an entire organ, our root operation for coding purposes is resection, okay? So it's very important that you guys learn this new set of terminology because, again, a physician doesn't, doesn't dictate to PCS coding. A physician dictates to what they did. We in coding have to be able to analyze that documentation and then tie it back to our PCS terminology, okay? Um, the other thing I want to point out in this root operation definition is do you guys see the very first column 
next to the term, that's the character that would be in the third value or the third placeholder for our PCS code. So resection, for example, like if I was coding an appendectomy, my resection, my third place of the PCS code, the third value, is going to be a T. So that, that's what that means. Restriction right under it would be a V. Revision would be a W. <clears throat> so again, by just having the seven characters in the code, every character has a value, has a meaning. So anytime we see a T in the third character slot, that means that the procedure we're coding or the procedure that was performed was a resection. 